Okay, so again, one solid model, no wireframe. And the tool paths in, in this, we've got a dynamic OptiRef. Uh, again, I'm using the advanced tool path to display, just showing the cutting motion only. And I've got an equal scallop that comes in and, and cuts all that. See how cleanly that, I, you know, I limited it off of these faces. Now this is done in mill 3D. And uh, so there's a good example right there. You're not going to make that happen in mill like that. There's other ways you can, you can make it happen, but not like, not like we're doing here. So that's one composite uh, with the new equal scallop, a super nice tool path down in there. Really nice, it generates a beautiful finish. And then I've got um, a raster tool path uh, because in many cases, uh, people get very particular about certain features being machined a certain way. So visualizing that on that feature, you want just an extremely good finish and you want all the cut pattern to be running along the axis of that cylinder. So you'll see I've got a raster tool path machining that. So yet my equal scallop cuts the whole thing. So is this going to get double cut and maybe not necessarily, uh, you know, give us that finish that we're after? Well, no, that's part of the new machining strategies is we have the ability to tag specific surfaces with different stock allowances. So you can see I have a second machining geometry group called plus two. There's one entity, and it is at a net plus two thousands. So when it scallop mills the whole shape, it leaves two thousands proud on this feature so that this next operation comes through and has two thousands to clean up. So that's how that's done. Uh, you could, you know, avoid uh, this entirely and scallop these two blue regions but I wanted to show that you can use plus stock um, where you just kind of want to use this more as polishing and uh, real fine finishing. So that's how you do that. You can set up, uh, you know, another group in there and give it a different stock allowance. So the surface has a plus two for the scallop and then a net zero for the raster. Then I use pencil trace to clean up down in the valleys. Got a nice pencil trace operation that drops that ball in mill in there and cleans that up. And then the new deburring tool path, uh, which requires mill 3D plus multi-axis. You have to have the multi-axis license to run the deburring. I showed this last week, um, or maybe it was the week before, and showed uh, the new deburring. So we've got this, this all programmed, and so now let's talk about a revision. So what would it take if they wanted to change maybe this, this feature right here to a different radius? What kind of an effect is that going to be? What kind of programming time is involved in making that adjustment? So on another level, I have a Rev B here. And I again, I set Rev B to glass so that you can see through it and you can see both models. So the revision only has to do with the radius of that. We need to make the radius this, of this uh, feature here um, a smaller diameter. And so what we can do is let's go back to part only. And we're going to go into model prep and we're going to use the push-pull and we're going to take this feature. Uh, then we're going to turn on both. And I'm going to start to pull this. And I'm going to snap this up to the edge of this other feature. Let's see here. Let's get this back down below. Now, the easy, the easy way to do this, let me actually restart this. So I'm going to go back to uh, part only. When I start the push-pull tool, I'm going to start it right over in this area. So I'm going to go back to model prep, push-pull. Now you can just analyze to get the radius. Um, and then turn on Rev B and pull this to match this radius. And when you hit OK, we've updated Rev A 
to match. All right, so that now has been changed. Go back to our machining, select all, and regenerate. And let's see if we can get our multi-threading uh, multi manager to display here. It might finish before I can get to it. Okay, so that's off into the multi-threading. Oh, I accidentally, accidentally selected, selected a couple of additional deeper operations that aren't a part of this, but that's okay. So after this is done regenerating, you can do a file save as and save it you know, under a different name. Uh, so essentially what we just did is we left all the machining connected to Rev A and we adapted Rev A to match Rev B. <clears throat> so the model's been moved or manipulated. And so, you know, it's just another approach. Uh, that's done. That's a, that's a lot of machining and pretty much every single toolpath in there was affected and all that machining is now updated and uh, ready to post. So new version uh, of the part with that change uh, ready to go. Okay, so I'm going to pause for a minute and see any other questions. Don't forget, you also have the machine simulation verify too. Uh, so if you're getting into a lot of big parts with a, a lot of complexity, uh, you might want to you know, try switching and using that. In fact, I'll show that simulation here in just a minute as well. Uh, it's a little bit more tailored to uh, larger files, bigger, bigger tool paths. Uh, this has a little bit finer uh, look to it. Um, and it, you do have control over your, I'm a little bit closer to precision than I am performance, um, but the ability to jump and skip ahead quickly uh, definitely happens faster in the other verify. So I'm going to close this, and I use this a lot. So machine verify instead of the master cam simulator. So I'm just going to come out here. I've got it on my right mouse click, and I'm just going to say run simulation verify and launch that. <clears throat> okay, that's in here ready to go. And you'll see that uh, this really will blast through it. A pretty good clip. Also, you can pause and just hit next stop, and it'll just go as fast as it can process, you know, to get that cut model. So there it is after the opti. And then next stop. So this is the scallop and the scallop tool path being held at plus two up here on this feature. So you can see that a little bit of roughness down in there from the scallop milling. And then next stop is the pencil trace that cleans that up. So that's all cleaned up. And then next stop, oh, that was pencil trace, sorry. Turn the work piece off. We'll look at just the stock for a minute. Okay, now it's ready for the deburr, so we'll run that. Okay, and that's the deburring. But that's, again, that's Rev B done and ready to go.